You absolutely need to know how to do all of the shrines in Sea of Thieves. Now, not even just for beginner stuff, though it is a great beginner place to start because of the new raid voyages, but you also have to use them for exploits, other stuff. You can store loot here. There's a ton of things that you can do to mess with this stuff across the map. So definitely just so you definitely need to make sure that you have all these down just in case you have to use them for future methods or if you're new to the game either way you're gonna need them. before i get started i just want to say i'm trying to make it to 5,000 subscribers and if you could help me get there that would be a ton and as always thank you guys for watching before I get started, I also am going to drop a couple tips um, and just a couple things to explain about the shrines. If you see me talking about these shrine statues that are movable, that's just these little mermaid statues that you can hit. They'll move your, they'll move their arms up and down to match the murals on the walls that I will talk about in multiple shrines. So if that's what I'm talking about, you know that this is what I'm talking about. Also, in almost every shrine, there will be these mermaid statues. That is where you put your loot. After you do that, when you go back up to your ship, you will be able to retrieve your loot from another mermaid. So that way you don't have to swim each into a piece back through all the puzzles and all that kind of stuff. Also, if you are doing these as raid voyages, please ignore all the ports about me saying if to dive to it and all that stuff because you will already be diving for it. And lastly, you will only be able to get the Breath of the Sea portions of this tutorial if you actually have the Breath of the Sea voyage found in only message in a bottles. So if you hear me talking about that as well and you don't have that, don't worry, that's pretty normal. But if you do have the Breath of the Sea voyage, that's how you're going to go ahead and you're going to have to go through this to get it. First off, we're going to start with the Shrine of Hungering. Now, to, if you want to get there quickly and you're kind of far away, you can dive for the Revenge of the Morning Star Tall Tale, and that will bring you to Daggertooth Outpost, which is about as close as you can get as far as diving goes to this shrine specifically. After you get there, you're going to have to swim down towards this rib cage, and you're actually not going to go into the spire. You're going to go on a little mount across from it, and it's just going to be a tunnel, but in this tunnel, there will be sharks, so just watch out, and it'll bring you to this first main room where you'll have to kill another couple sharks, and you'll see your first puzzle. Once you get right into this room, all you're going to have to do is look up on the wall at this mural, and that's going to tell you the positions for the arms, and you're going to base that off of what they're holding in their hand. So this one's holding the ball, and I set it to the one that's holding the ball in the mural. This one's, there's one that's holding a chain, and one that's holding a coral. This will be a very common occurrence throughout the entire, all of these shrines, so just pay attention to it. As soon as you're done, you're just going to have to hit the one with the horn, and you'll be ready to go. It'll start raising the water level and playing music. And that's how you know that you did it right. Now, once you do that and the water level goes up, you're going to use a geyser to push you up to the next puzzle. The next puzzle is the same thing. You're going to look for another mural and you're going to do all of the same ones over again. And once you do that, all you have to do is once you set off into the right position, all you have to do is hit the horn again. You're going to have to shoot this one, though, and you can go up this spine and this broken mass. Now, on top of the spine, there's going to be a good opportunity for some loot. And up the broken mass, there will be a good opportunity for some more loot, as well as some parkour. Watch out for this geyser on the wall, though, as it will throw you back down. So like I said, yeah, just a little bit of parkour, but you have tons of opportunities for loot here, and this is not where the loot stops. Now, obviously, you want to be careful because you do not want to fall off of this, but it's definitely worth grabbing all the loot over here, especially if it's small stuff that you can grab with one of these treasure chests. Once you have all the loot from that room stored in mermaid statues, you're going to hit this purple thing, and you're going to get ready to go up to the next room. The next room, you got to be careful. You want to make sure that you've got a decent amount of health and some ammo because this next room is going to be quite full of sharks. It's also going to be quite full, though, so like I said, just make sure you got food, ammo, you got everything you need to take care of, just a couple sharks. And uh, yeah, like I said, in here, just around the edges of it, there's going to be little alcoves that have loot in them. And not to mention, there's also going to be the Breath of the Sea throne, which if you have the quest for that and you followed my instructions so far, that should be pretty easy to get and just grab and throw it in one of the mermaids. You can also grab the rest of the loot, and there is mermaids in this room that's to get all of your stuff back up to your ship. Store, once you store everything inside the mermaids, you can return up to your ship and you will be able to use this little purple guy outside your ship and go up to him and you can claim all your stuff and your stuff will float up to the surface and then go ahead and go sell. Pretty simple. Next up is the Shrine of the Coral Tomb, which is in the northwest of the map near Sanctuary Outpost. And if you're starting out anywhere relatively far from this shrine, you're going to want to first dive to the Wild Rose Tall Tale, which will put you at Sanctuary Outpost, and then you can go ahead and cancel the Tall Tale after that, but this will just get you way closer. After you arrive at the shrine, swim down on the side with this purple thing to open the door. There's really no other landmarks, so just try and look at the orientation on my screen if you're having trouble finding the door. After you get through the door, you'll have to go down quite a long water slide, and this water slide will drop you into a room with three puzzles to solve and a lot of different loot rooms. The first thing you need to do is look up on the wall, and this will tell you the order that you need to complete the puzzles in. You will see three symbols. Mine, in order, were the ball, the coral, and the chain, but yours may be different. So just make sure to check. For each of the three puzzles, there's going to be three switches with symbols next to them, one with a ball, one with a coral, and one with a chain. Based in what order they're in on the mural is the order that you have to press them in. For the first puzzle, all three switches will be in this main room, two of them underwater, and one above the water. 
you hit them in the correct order based off of what you see on the mural. So for me, I hit the one with the ball symbol next to it, then the one with the coral symbol next to it, and then the one with the chain symbol next to it. And after you do that, you should hear music and some doors moving. If you don't hear this, something went wrong. The next puzzle is to do the same thing, but only in the rooms with the yellow coral. For me, the first one was above the water down this little hallway with the yellow coral on it, and the second one was across the room from me underwater in a little tunnel, and then the last one was back in the main room just like the first puzzle. Again, just do the order that is on your mural. Again, if you do it in the right order, you should notice music and two more doors moving, opening you up to the last puzzle. This puzzle is the same as the other two, except for now you're going to be going to the rooms with the red coral in them. Two of the red switches for the red coral will be underwater in separate tunnels across the room from each other, and then the last switch for me was up top in the main room, just like the previous two puzzles. After hitting all three switches in the order, you should hear music one last time, and you should see the water rising. Like I said, if at any point this didn't happen, or you're not hearing the music or something, then that means you're not hitting the switches in the correct order. Once the water rises, you will gain access to all of the loot rooms around the edge of the main puzzle room, and if you have the quest for the Breath of the Sea, and that's what you're looking for, the location for that will be right up here in this main section, that's assuming that you have followed all of the previous instructions and steps, and you can use the mermaid statues right here to store all of the loot from the loot rooms and get them back up to your ship and claim it. Next up is the Shrine of Ocean's Fortune. Now if you want to get to this one quickly and you're far away from it, all you have to do is vote for the Art of a Trickster in the Shores of Gold section of the Tall Tales. This Tall Tale will bring you to Plunder Valley, which is just an island or two south. So all you gotta do is turn your boat north and you'll be quick to get to the shrine. But if you get lost or you need some help, just go ahead and look on the map. Once you get there, all you're gonna have to do is start swimming down towards the shipwreck on the ocean floor and head into the main spire. Now you're gonna have to see that you're gonna see this broken gate. That's where you're gonna head through the bottom of. Once inside, you're gonna see this first ladder. That's where you're gonna have to climb up. It's on the back side of the pillar when you first come in and head up this bridge. Now with this pulley system, you're gonna have to pull platform all the way down to the bottom. You will have to move this platform more so I will show a shortcut so you don't ever have to do that first part again. You're going to use it as a jump and you're going to jump across to this cap stand. Now you're going to use this cap stand to move the next pieces of parkour. That way you are able to do them later but you're not going to do them yet. So you're going to move the cap stand but you're not actually going to do the parkour yet. You're going to actually head down to the left of the path behind the cap stand and open this iron gate so that way you don't have to do the first part again. After that, you can go ahead and jump across the parkour and head up. Now, this is going to be your first possible loot room, so you're going to need to keep an eye out for loot if you're trying to collect it, which obviously, why else would you be here? This is only, of course, like I said at the very beginning, if you are not doing this for a raid voyage, because you won't find that. Now, also in this room is a pulley that will bring down a broken mast for your next piece of parkour. After you bring down that pulley, go back to where the cap stand was and head up this ladder. This ladder will bring you to another pulley system attached to the first original platform. Now this first original platform is going to have to be raised all the way up to the top position. Now you only can have this thing really at bottom or top, there's no use having it in the middle, so just slam it all the way up to the top. After that you're going to need to go across this first mast and jump down the platform and then jump down to the broken mast that you lowered from that chain. I will also mention at this point that I was on a very laggy server, so if you see me kind of bouncing back and forth or being real weird about jumps, that's because I was lagging super bad. So just if you're on a laggy server, this is the worst shrine for you. To do. Up this next hallway is going to be your first set of enemies, probably just some coral skeletons, but they will most likely spawn. And keep following that hallway, you're going to run into this cap stand. Now it's most likely going to be all the way up at first, but if you miss the jump a few times or even just once, it's going to be back down and you're going to have to raise it up. And you may even have to do this from the beginning anyways, so just keep in mind, check if it's up or down. Once you get it up, you're going to lower it and hop on the first platform, and you're going to wait for it to rotate and line up with the second platform. Now, as I said, this is I was on a very laggy server, but this itself is just a glitchy jump, so be very careful with it, and don't be too frustrated if you fall, because it's pretty common, at least it was for me, especially when I was on the laggy server. Once it finished, once the capstan finishes rotating, it'll drop you at this next platform, which you can head up the path, across another broken mast, and this is where a point where it if you can, you're going to want to grab some food because the next part is going to have enemies in it. You're definitely going to want to grab some food if you did what I did and fell a couple times on the next part. Now at this point, I will find it worth mentioning that there is quite a bit of loot in this first original room. Now it's best to see it from the top where I'm at right now, but if you do want it, just hop back down, grab it, and put it in mermaid statues before moving on. I didn't find a need because there was only one or two pieces, but if you do find the need, then that's where you could find some extra loot. In this next room, you're going to find a ton of enemies, but you're also going to find the Breath of the Sea Throne. And if you have the quest for that and you followed my instructions thus far, it should be very easy to find. 
after going ahead and eliminating all the enemies, there's a few shipwrecks around the room you're going to want to head to. Now, the first one for me didn't have any loot, but it can have loot, and the next one's almost always guaranteed to have loot. The second one is up this path and to the left. Like I said, they're almost guaranteed to have loot, and there's a mermaid right out this path before you go up to the next one. So this is very easy loot to store. I would definitely recommend grabbing it. After you've gotten all your loot, you're going to head back up this path, and there's the mermaid I talked about. Head up this path to the last part of this puzzle section. Now this last room is not complicated but can be quite frustrating so try and keep your patience with it and try and take your time with it especially if it's your first couple times doing it. You're gonna head up and grab this first wheel and all you gotta do is make this platform be in the right spot to where you can jump to it and jump up to the next section. You're gonna follow this path and all you have to do from here on out is just keep rotating these masts back and forth and so you can keep jumping on them that was terrible lag holy crap you're going to keep rotating these masts back and forth till you can jump on them and get across the next section and just keep following the path now once you're at the very top there's a mermaid up here and up on top of even that there is some loot so definitely do not miss it on this loot this is normally the best loot in the entire shrine and i'm pretty sure if you're doing a raid voyage that this is where your loot will be so definitely make sure you check it out Right up here, you can grab it, you can drop it down to this mermaid statue, and store it just like you would any other piece. I would definitely recommend dropping it rather than parkouring up there each time. After you return to ship, your mermaid with your loot will pop up, and you'll be able to collect it and move on. The next shrine on our list is going to be the Shrine of Tribute. Now, the Shrine of Tribute is located in the southwest of the map, and if you're anywhere far from this, you can go ahead and dive to the Art of a Trickster Tall Tale in the Shores of Gold Tall Tale section. That's going to bring you to Plunder Valley, which is just one or two islands away, and then you will be able to get there much easier. Now once you get there, you're going to have to dive down under the water, and you're going to swim towards this little pool, and near that pool is going to be a switch. Now the switch is going to open the door to the shrine. All you have to do is swim down this hallway, and it's going to go down into the beginning of the puzzle. In this very first room of the puzzle, you're going to need to look at this mural, because that's going to tell you everything that you need to know, and you're going to need to memorize it. After you've memorized it, you're going to want to swim right. If you're looking at it, you're going to want to turn right and swim down that tunnel. And you're going to swim all the way around it until you come up to this little like statue slash symbol. You're going to take a left at that crossroads and then take your next right. And that is going to be the first mermaid statue, which is going to be, in my case, holding the ball. This is the only mermaid statue not in the main room, and you just need to make sure that it's in the right position. And if it's not, you can put it in the right position by hitting it. Make sure its arm is just the way it was on the mural. You're then going to head back towards that symbol statue and take a left and swim all the way down until you get to until you get to this trumpet statue. You can then turn right and go into the main room, and from there there are going to be two more statues that you have to set, just like the mural had them. The first one is on the left up the staircase is the one holding the chain, right here, and the next one is going to be back to the right behind this big statue in the center of the room, and it's in like a little hole in the wall. So you may not see it at first, but you just need to swim up there and also make sure there's a little land spot. You go up to that land spot and you just need to make sure that it's also as it's supposed to be. After you've done all three of these correctly and they're all how they are supposed to be like they are on the mural, all you have to do is shoot or hit the big one with the horn at the entrance of this room and it should trigger a big like golden flash wave of light and then some sound effects and you should, it also should cause the water to rise. Once it starts causing the water to rise, you just have to come over to this little bridge pathway that you can now access with the risen water, head up the stairs and you're gonna have a few pressure plates that you're gonna need to hit. The first one is going to be once you get up the path, you're going to go straight across this and to your right. Now to your right is going to be, like I said, the first pressure plate of three. There's also a few pieces of loot in here, so you may want to grab those or just keep an eye out for them in case you want them, depending on what you're doing and if you're doing this as a raid voyage. Now next you have one right before the statue, and you're going to have to jump across the statue and back to the other side is where the last pressure plate is. After you hit that pressure plate, you can keep following the jump puzzle, and there's some loot up here, as well as the Breath of the Sea location, so if you followed all my instructions so far, this should be very straightforward to grab. After hitting all of those pressure plates, you're going to notice another room open. It's going to be at the feet of the statue. Now, there are enemies in here, so make sure you have ammo or health to deal with them, but they should not be hard to deal with. They're just the regular old sirens. And down in this is the actual loot room. Straight through these pillars, and there's the loot, and this is where your raid loot should be if you are doing this as a raid voyage, and otherwise, there's just a ton of loot in here if you're doing it normally. After you do this, of course, you can put it all in one of the mermaid statues and head back up to your ship to claim it. Next up is the Shrine of the Ancient Tears. Now, if you want to get to this one quickly, you're just going to have to dive for the Cursed Rogue Tall Tale, and that's going to bring you up at Plunder Outpost. Now, once you get there, you're just going to have to dive down, and you're going to head for the shipwreck at the very bottom. This shipwreck is 
going to be right next to the entrance, and then once you get down towards the shipwreck, all you're going to have to do is turn and go into the entrance of the spire. Once at the entrance, all you have to do is shoot this little purple thing. You're going to have a little drop down in this main section. Now, in this main section, you have to light four torches and step on four pressure plates, each in just the corners. So, four pressure plates on each side, and four torches on each side, like I said. Now, once you do this, that's going to open the first set of doors as well as the later puzzle, or as well as access to the later puzzle in just a minute. After you get all of those lit, it's going to open this set of doors right at the top of the stairway, and you're going to go through that, and there's going to be a few more torches that you have to light. So you have to have two on the left and two on the right. Once you light all of these, it's going to open the room for the main puzzle, but we're going to come back to that in just a minute. Now, for now, all you're going to have to do is just head left, and we're going to work on the parkour puzzle next before going on to the big main puzzle. All you have to do for the parkour puzzle is head up these ladders and go across this little beam it's just gonna be a few jumps pretty much now this is also gonna lead to a possible loot room depending on how you're doing it obviously if you're a raid voyage it's not gonna pop up but if you're doing this normally you do have a chance for loot up here as well once you get to the very top all you have to do is flip this switch and it will make the water level start going down once the water level starts going down you can jump off this like little diving board shaped thing straight into the water below it's gonna be shallow but you'll be okay once you jump into the water below all you're gonna have to do is swim up to this altar and light all four torches on each of the corners. This is going to open two different pathways that you will be able to take. One of them is going to be the location for the Breath of the Sea, which if you've followed all my instructions so far and have had the quest for it, this should be very easy to grab throwing this mermaid up top that I'm walking to now. If you go up the other pathway, you're going to lead to your first almost always guaranteed loot room. There'll almost always be loot in this loot room. Up here, there's going to be some by the barrel on the right and some by the switch on the left. If you flip the switch, it'll allow you to take this all back out to the main room. To get back out to the main room, you can just drop it at this mermaid statue here, and I will also point out that this green room over to the left will have a chance for loot as well, depending on how you're doing it. All right, now onto the main puzzle. First, all you gotta do is you're going to have to head right once you get into it. Now, all the way down here at the right, you're gonna have a switch and a, you're gonna have a switch and a place to light. All this entire puzzle is is just lighting and flipping switches. So for that one, you flip that switch, you're gonna light this, flip this other switch, and then there's one more switch and it's okay if you miss a few lights because we'll come back to how you can tell if you missed one later it's no big deal but try and get as many as you can also look out for these pieces of loot that are just in these little trap doors triggered by the pressure plates and uh, you can move on to the next section in the next section you'll encounter probably just a few basic enemies and this next section is a little bit more complicated but i will explain it like i said look out for those loot pieces in the side walls first you're going to want to head down to the right side of this path and in the right side of this path, there's going to be um, two switches as well as quite a few different things to light. But you will have to come, you're done in here for now, but you will have to come back down here later. You flip both these switches, you make sure to light all of these torches. And that set of doors right there that I was just looking at is where we'll have to come back to. After that, you can come and flip this switch. I guess you could flip that one first if you wanted to and just go down there. It's going to open this set of doors, but it's also going to open that other set of doors we were looking at. Now, why would we need to go through there? Well, there's a few more torches to light. And like I said, you have to light all of them to get the loot. So light these you also have a chance for loot in here as well as well as a mermaid to store the loot in by itself so you can do that walking into the third of the four sections there's gonna be one like right through the door there's gonna be a pressure plate that you have to stand on and there's gonna be one one switch there and then one switch behind the pressure plate so there's two right off the bat go around the corner and you can check all these pressure plate areas for stuff if you want but you don't have to there's one last lever and like i said before make sure to light everything on the way down and into the fourth area the first thing well, first you're probably going to encounter some enemies, but then the first piece, the first lever is going to be into this room on your left right when you walk in. That is the first lever, and the other two are going to be in trap doors, just like we've seen a few in the past. Now, if you want to know which trap doors, it's going to be the ones with the crab symbol on the outside of them. So for this instance here, you got this one. Also can be loot in these. And then further down the path, there's going to be more enemies as well as more torches to light. And near the very end, you can stand on this pressure plate in the water. And the room for the this will open up the thing for the last lever. After you do that, light it. Like I said, make sure all your torches are lit. Just go back and take a peek real quick. If you see any that are unlit, then obviously check those out. But like I said, you will have a chance to go back and fix this in just a moment. After you're pretty sure that all of them are lit, you can head back. This is going to circle back to the main area right where you went when you first entered this puzzle and you're going to see that in one of the rooms that you looked in before that there is now lights over most or should be all of the symbols but if you're missing like in this case the turtle one for me the turtle one's not lit because i missed a light so all you have to do in that scenario is run back find the light that you missed maybe you missed a couple maybe you missed some in multiple sections but all that those not being lit means is that you missed a light so in this case i just missed this one on the corner I was able to light it and that was all good now if all of them are lit you will get access to the big loot room but there is a few things to do in this loot room 
First, there's just a decent amount of loot in general, but you can also stand on this pressure plate and it will open three more doors that can also store loot. Make sure to grab all the loot out of these and just set it off to the side, and then you can take that mermaid that I pointed out previously, put all your stuff in that mermaid, and you can head back up to the surface and claim everything that you got on your journey down here with all these puzzles. And lastly, we have the Shrine of the Flooded Embrace. Now, if you want to get here quickly, all you have to do is go to the Ashen Age and the Seabound Soul Tall Tale and go ahead and dive to that. Now, once you dive to that, it's going to bring you up at Shipwreck Bay, which is literally like less than an island away. It's super close. This one's located right in the center of the map. So Shipwreck Bay is almost perfect for it. Now, once you get there, you're going to swim down right on top of the spire. There's this boat wreck, the shipwreck, and inside the captain's quarters is a door that you can swim right through. Now, once you swim through it, all you have to do is swim straight down all all the way to the bottom now there's going to be loot scattered around the entire thing but all the way at the bottom is where the most loot is going to be and if you're doing it as a raid that's where your raid loot is going to be the only thing to mention is that there is going to be a few sirens in here that you're going to have to kill but otherwise this is probably the most straightforward one the only problem i sometimes have is not being able to find the mermaid statues to store your stuff in so if you're having that same problem you may have to swim your stuff back up but otherwise if you can find them like i said it's kind of on and off for me whether they're there or not for me for some reason but if you can find them this is probably the easiest one to do now not to mention also how easy Easy, the breath of the sea is if you are down here the breath of the sea is right in this corner right next to the shipwreck you don't have to do anything special for it there's no puzzles so if you have that and you follow the instructions so far it should be very easy to find and yeah, like I said, lastly, if you can find the mermaid statues, then you just gotta stack your stuff up, throw it in, and go back up to your boat. And obviously, if you can't, you may have to swim your stuff or just restart. But otherwise, this is actually probably one of the easiest shrines. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate all you guys that are still here. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe, because as I said at the beginning, I'm trying to reach 5,000 subscribers. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.